Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Immigrant Section. It's your boy Abbas Wahab saying howdy. I appreciate y'all. We got another banger for you today. In the studio with me today, my guy. He designed the new merch. I've been working with this guy for months. Fucking talented graphic designer, Sudani. I didn't even know you're Sudani when we reached out. But anyways, we'll talk. My guy, Basil Khairi, or as they say, Basil Khairi, right? Yes, sir. You got to pronounce it with the K so they think you're a white dude. You yeah, know? Basil Khairi. Yeah, he looks like a nice Irish gentleman. He's yeah. coming in for an interview. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, but I have no, yeah, you yeah. show up. I know I'm black, but I have no yeah, accent. Look, exactly, please. look, no, I was I'm born not- here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, your Instagram is back to basics. Yes, sir, back yes. to basics. Show the people what you, the, the immigrant section logo has always been the same, but yo. I never did that one, but yes, sir. Check this is the new that out. merch. Look at that. Immigrant section colors, you know, Su- super, that. super icy. Yo, this episode, once this episode drops these shirts should be available you'll find probably a link below i don't know if it's gonna be shopify i don't know what i'll figure it out but once you're able to see this there will be a link my guy killed it with that design man and some sudani not included yeah right (laughs) (laughs) what's going on man Ah, same old, you know, COVID opening up, trying to like not be antisocial, you know? It's so weird. Do you feel yourself being like socially weird as fuck now? Yeah, bro. I went to like the grocery store. I asked her like how you're doing like four times, bro. I'm just looking at With her like- With a mask on, right? Yeah, I was just like, how are you doing? She's like, fine. I was like, oh, this is awkward. How are you doing? Uh, fine. Okay. <laughs> she just looked at me. She's like, you already said that, sir. I was like, you can be more you're polite like, about it, miss. <laughs> you're like, I was I was weird before, but not this weird. Yeah, yeah exactly. I bro, I, fuck, I, went, I was going into an- a T A and W the other day, and uh, I just clapped really loud. Like <laughs> on my way in, there was a girl at the intersection waiting, and uh, she just jumped. She was so scared, and she looked back at me, and I had nothing. You know, usually you could be like, "Oh, there was." I want you to move, or yeah, just, my mom I had nothing. Just left, yeah, know? I had nothing, nothing. Yeah, I, I just kind of—I was wearing a hoodie. I just kind of looked down and fucking ran in the end of you. Even this is gonna be the longest convo with anyone I'm not related to for like two years. You know what I mean? Like, is that just weird? Business calls, like, yep, yeah, cool, have it to you, bye. You know, I'm not really like interacting with other people my age at all. That's the only thing that I actually am super thankful about this podcast. It, all the way throughout COVID, even in the beginning of COVID, where it's like, I never stopped, ever, <laughs> ever. Even when it was like, everybody stay at home. I was like, yeah. I was texting people. I was like, yeah, like, come by. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what the we're fuck, far you know? Enough apart. But we'd have to do pictures. We'd have to stay six feet apart for the pictures, the oh, promo yeah. pictures. So the, so the COVID Nazis don't come after exactly, you. you know exactly, exactly. I mean? <laughs> My buddy's like, yo, do you have like a measuring tape? And we could literally, that's to be yeah. like... You know, yeah, try to know. be creative. Our family's like 10 people. We go out, people just look at us like, yo, what's wrong with these people? You're meant to be isolated. We're, we're all like, in the nah, same man. household. We're all one group. Get it's the like East African us. family. That so, reminds me of your joke about the the baggage allowance. <laughs> like That had me yeah. laughing when I saw it. About like, why do we have more kids? It's like baggage allowance. I'm like, sure it's We'd be putting allowance. like pillows, like whatever, tissue boxes in the bo- thing just to hit the 30 kilos, you know? Yeah, <laughs> actually. I'm dead ass. Like, I wish I was lying. Like, my, like bro, my brother one time had to go from like Sudan to Canada with like 10 kilos of chocolate in his backpack because the bag wouldn't fit. It's just like. That's so fucking funny. It's so funny how immigrants are. Like, you ever. You ever go to a fucking buffet and it's like you're full and your parents like mm-hmm. your dad's like eat more. It's yeah, like fuck. I'm full, yo. It's like yeah. eat more, like I have to this, justify like, 35 the price. year old cousin like straight out of Sudan. He has like the first thirty minutes. He just makes his money back. So like if it's a sushi restaurant, he's only eating salmon. Then he'll take yeah, a little yeah, break yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, then it's like, what do I actually want to eat? You know what I mean? That's that's some immigrant immigrant. Yeah, you gotta shit. get every dollar, brother. Like go get the lobster and just <laughs> throw it in the garbage. Yeah, and yeah. now I can have whatever yeah. I want because I feel just. The funniest thing that I get reminded of is you ever seen the Friends episode where Kramer comes with like foil in his pockets no he i comes and he's like kramer? stealing. yeah i'm pretty sure what are you, kramer. About? you mean seinfeld yeah seinfeld sorry that was I'm so confusing that was a very white reference I've was never there a watched crossover e- at some i've point? never watched either of those shows yeah. i just seen this one clip where he has like um foil in his pockets and he's stealing all the shrimp and now i just look at my dad just waiting for the day you know what i mean that's so <laughs> i haven't been to a buffet in a minute too I don't think they're very sanitary with COVID. They're, buffets are the most anti-COVID thing possible, you know? Yeah, exactly. And even before COVID, it's like... Uh, I, I was still down. I Does was your still family have, like, the love relationship with Mandarin? Oh, no Mandarin 100%. <laughs> we go there regular, like, 100%. every Tuesday. I don't know <laughs> what 
that Mandarin does for immigrants and all ethnic people, but they somehow they have the best PR for ethnic yeah, people. Exactly. Every every Eid, right after the Eid prayer, you book it to Mandarin because you know every Mandarin. Arab family <laughs> is there too. Last like, time Iran. we were there, the guy was thanking us. We went like two weeks ago, right when the sh- stuff opened up. The owner came up to us. He's like, "Yeah, we're just trying." Was he something. Chinese? You, yeah, yeah, thank. You. Thankfully, I wouldn't have trusted him. If he was white, you're like, what the fuck? (laughs) But he's like, yeah, we're trying this new thing. We thank you guys so much for actually coming in. We're We're thanking people now. We're like, brother, we're here regardless. We don't care, you know? That's that's when you know times are tough when the Asian business owner is being like, we got to start thanking these motherfuckers. Yeah, exactly. We got to try something drastic. Even me, I was weirded out. Make eye contact with them, sir. It's like, it could work. It could work. You know? But uh, you ever notice that they're there on like short visas? So most of them like who, who? Are, these Mandarin workers like creep me out. They're like automatrons or whatever they call. They're like robots. Like, like how they work? Yeah, bro. And then I found out it's because they're all here on like two year study visas or something like that. So like they're oh, and they make like, that shit. Ex- they're last. literally like replaceable. You know? Yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no eye contact. Yeah, exactly. I'm just here to go to George Brown, serve you your Mandarin, and go back. It's like the Mexican vibe in the in America. Like the, always the in the kitchen, like all the kitchen staff, bar backs, all that stuff is like a lot of times it'll be like maybe undocumented or maybe whatever. But it's that same kind of vibe of just like I'm hustling and I'm just kind of like, Glad I don't to want be any there. problems. Yeah, I don't want no problems. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So you were born here? Yeah. Like what? Like I only linked up with you when I was trying to pretty much. It came to this. So I work with two artists to try to work with the, you know, there's the hoodie design in this shirt. And, uh, yo, I love, I have a huge respect for artists. I have a huge respect for graphic design. That's why I actually wanted to work with multiple, not not working like on the same thing with multiple yeah. guys. Because that's having gonna, different styles involved. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I like the back and forth. I liked your shit. I liked, it's nice when you can go on someone's Instagram and just be like, just skim through and be like, yeah, I like the vibe of this. This is what yeah. they produce. I like the vibe of this shit. And you never know what you're going to get yourself I into. I appreciate it. I feel like we're shat on. Like, this is all the first time I'm hearing this, especially from a Sudani. My dad looks at me. He's like, art doesn't make no money. There's no money in art. Well, I paid you, bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's not really art at that point, too. It's like functional design. But yeah. 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 You, However you want to look at it. But it does pay the bills. It's like it, yeah. it, it's 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 so easy to shit talk about it at the beginning. At yeah. the bottom, yeah, exactly. Oh, it's so, and it, you almost have no defense, yeah, except just be like, "Have faith." Or I'm like, actually so glad you're saying any of this because we're just shat on. Like, it's always like, "I need a logo for free," and then other than that, people just hit you like, "I need a logo, I need a shirt." And then other than that, it's like, "Oh, are you sure that pays the bills?" It's like, "Bro, you're asking me for stuff. How do you like? You know what I mean? Where's the logic?" No, people are actually crazy. There's so much, but bo- it's it blows me away, especially when artists cannibalize other artists. Like, I see this all the time where it's like, as a comedian, and you probably understand this too, as a comedian, there's so many shows we will do where they'll be like, yeah, it's not a paid spot. Because they know comedians are so desperate for stage yeah, time, we'll always say yes. We'll pay they, you an exposure. Yeah, that the, is, they'll say that with the big things, which is like the most bullshit move. Yeah. But on the small side, they don't even say exposure. They just go, be fucking happy you got stage time, you know? So, so often producers who aren't comedians themselves will do that. They'll charge audience for a ticket to come in and not give any of it to the guy. And the headliner will get money, you know, the the main guys, but a lot the 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 fresher, the younger, more amateur people. It's very standard. And even the culture is like it's weird to ask. Yeah, it's like I'm there's, happy to be here. Yeah, there's yeah. no other job where it's like, oh, uh, it's weird. No, every other job is if I come and help you roof, if I come and help you do yeah, anything. Yeah, exactly. That's, you know, where's that's my fucking point. money? People see value in like very mundane things. Then the things that they're like entertained by, they don't see know, the value exactly. in. Exactly. You know? No, none of these people are willing to go up and attempt to entertain a group of people. And, but it's like, yeah, yeah, oh, it's a guest. But like I was just talking with one comedian I know, and she was like she did a show with me. She goes, did you get paid for this show? I'm like, yeah. She goes, I didn't. And I'm like, eh. I'm like, oh, reach out to the guy. She's like, oh, he said that it's a, it was no pay for guest spots. But he asked her to do a spot. Yeah, exactly. She didn't ask him. I know. It's like, I'm providing you value. You see the value. But this is the only place where like I'm not paid for that value. Because exactly. you just assume I'm happy exactly. to be here. That's and all I, art. It's so weird. I, like, I never knew it happened with comedy. I know? get it when it's producers who don't do like business-oriented people that are like, oh, I'm going to. There's a market here for comedy. I'm going to get comedians. Yeah. But when it's comedians who run the show and still do it, you're like, 
How are you? You're eating your own. It's that like, like pay your dues culture. Like I used to perform for free, so exactly. that's just how it goes. It it's doesn't that matter. Camp military exactly. shit. They yelled at me. I yell at exactly. you. Exactly. It doesn't matter if I have 10k for the show and I could afford to give you like 500, a thousand bucks, whatever. But it's just the idea that like I had to do this for free. Now you have to go through that stage too. Most comedians in Toronto, I swear to God, most spots in Toronto, most spots yeah. in Toronto. You'd be overpaid, or you'd be happy to get a twenty dollars for it. Like twenty dollars. Twenty dollars for is, your fifteen minutes of stand up or less. So like most, TTC money, basically. Yes, yeah. Yeah, most spots. Like if you drop, if you most, the average pay is ten or fifteen dollars for a paid spot. Yeah. And then when you're a headliner, it's different, right? But most shows will pay that. Like most shows, if they yeah. pay twenty bucks, is like damn twenty sick. This is real money. Like that's how underpaid. It is over. It reminds here. me of a saying: uh, "Everyone's a communist till they're rich." You know, like I'm sure when I he like was that. a broke, like stand up doing stuff for free, he was complaining about like, ah, oh, why don't they pay us? Whatever. It's rich. Uh, tax the rich. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five years later, he's here. Like, Born yeah, if you're Trump, not gonna do yeah. it for free, get out of here. Exactly. You know what I mean? It blows my mind how quickly people forget and cannibalize yeah. their own. I'm That's like, funny. I just seen that on Instagram. There's some girl I know. She's like super leftist, right? And I think she made a lot of money on Bitcoin and she's posting this thing about like like how taxing the rich means tax everyone who makes 50K and over and like billionaire mindset type Instagram stuff. It's like, a year and a half ago, you were just on this whole, like, defund the police, you know, tax the yeah, rich, yeah, yeah. keep the rich, you know? You've got a little Bitcoin, now it's different, you know what I mean? This, are you are you in crypto at all, by the no, way? No, no, I'm trying to get into the NFT space. Oh, but, shit. Uh, like, create it? Yeah, exactly. Like, I have a boy who's just doing pixel art, and he got, like, a thousand US per piece. He does that, like, four times a week. You know those, you've never seen the crypto? Uh, I've seen I've seen NFTs the like, crypto punk NFT that's no, like blowing no. up. Even um, Adobe or one of these people just bought one for 150k. It's literally like 16 pixels. If you see it, you'll be angry. It, it, it's like one wait, of those. Wait, 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 wait. What's it called? Crypt uh, NFT crypto punk or something like that. NFT crypto punk. This thing? Yes, those are selling for 150k a million. See, I don't understand this NFT shit, man. It's like, uh, it, it's basically, it's like art hosted on the Ethereum blockchain. I don't know what a blockchain is. I'm yeah, just yeah, repeating yeah, but we what love I was to say told yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so like God. the gist of it is there's a code that like identifies that specific file as like the original. So like right now I could go like make a copy of the design I gave you, right? Yeah. And there's no telling which one was the original one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both yeah. just JPGs or whatever. So now NFTs, you got me. Now you're saying I'm sweating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, that's that a horrible that example. Yeah, 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 you yeah. can though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably could NFT it. Like but, uh, if you just. But the NFT you were saying, it is in it like that the, the one structure the of the piece so, yeah, itself. Yeah, exactly. It's like hosted it in a wallet. It's yeah. like in your uh, crypto wallet or whatever they're called. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, crypto so, wallet. So it would be in that wallet, and then that piece, like it could be like a JPG or whatever you'd have on your uh, on your laptop. But instead, there's like a code attached to it. So now it's the original digital art piece. You know what I mean? So it's for sure only that one or only Well, the even if there's copies, they won't have that code attached to them, right? So, so this really guy knows he owns that. the original. Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, like yeah. buying like, I don't know, like the original painting of something. Except most paintings aren't 16 pixels of uh, of punk. Even there's, <sighs> a, there's even... a rock. There's a JPG of a literal rock. You can look this one up. That one went for a million dollars. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this, you know? I don't know who's buying them. <laughs> Like, that's who I'm thinking. Like, who's buying this stuff? I feel like that old fuck. Like, that's that's not how value works. This is value is a tangible item. I like, was I literally feel like thinking yeah, about yeah. it yesterday. There is no value. Like, yeah. understand investments, right? You're putting money into something. They're like using that money to expand the value of the company. Therefore, your share expands. Like, all of that makes sense. Having uh, a piece yeah, of even a though company. it's very confusing. Yeah. You could trace it. It's like, yeah, okay, you're... I own you're, a piece of a company, yeah, which It's is being something diluted, valuable. but still something is there, right? Yeah, you know, this JPG of a rock... I don't get it, man. I feel like it's a speculative market. I feel like in a year or two, people will realize all the NFTs they bought aren't worth anything. And then artists like me will just be laughing to the bank, I guess. You know? I, I have a feeling this thing will continue. You the know, NFT I, thing? that that two year mindset is how I thought about Bitcoin way at the beginning. Yeah, uh, <laughs> look at it. It's fucking me, here I'm to my stay, cousin. Like, he put like three fifty in Bitcoin in like 2016. I was yeah. telling him he's an idiot. You know what I mean? Now, What's that go for now? I don't. He lost his. He he had his code on a physical piece of paper. Oh. It was like a 32 <laughs> letter code. You know what I mean? He used to pull it out and show it to me. And now he can't find this, it. This is how I would yeah, make it big. Probably, this is my college fund. He showed us it was like 60k or something like that. The amount of Bitcoin. 
the app, but he was missing the code. That's so dumb. Take I a know. picture of it, scan it. I know. Put it in your Gmail drafts. That's that old school doing? mentality. You How know? old he wrote it guy? down? He's like 30. This is my same cousin who was a bit older than me. Who puts who has the foresight to put money 350? Like that's not just a hunch. That's like 350 bucks. Yeah. That's like, okay, I am I'm, I'm like relatively yeah, confident. You know? That part, <laughs> and then you write it physically on a piece of paper, I like know. put it in your Gmail. Even his what are dad, you doing? his dad's the angriest one about this because he also told him you're an idiot for buying it, and now when it turned out he's a smart guy, he can't even access it. So. That's so your dad <laughs> is that so stupid? <laughs> Ethereum right he's like, now. He's like, I'm at peace with it. I was like, no, you're not. You, <laughs> no, you're you not. better go look for that piece of paper. But you don't <laughs> yeah, sleep yeah, at night. Yeah. You don't sleep. See the guy who lost like 17 mil or something some on the hard the drive. Or yeah, whatever. exactly. There's so many of these stories. I just. Fuck all Couldn't that be shit. me, bro. I'd be here with like a hard hat on at the dump, just looking for any hard drive I could find. Uh, that did you? I, I don't know anything about your background. Did you study art? Did you like go a corporate no, way first? What did I used to work in? Like, sales. did you do engineering? Are you not? A, are you an engineer? No, no, no. I okay. should have been like yeah. a diplomat type policy person. So, yeah. like, I was studying environmental policy at U of T. I like. I pretty much dropped out, but I didn't. I just stopped taking courses. So yeah. technically, I'm still a student, but I don't really plan on going back. And I was studying environmental science and uh, political science. And then before that, I worked in like sales for Rogers and stuff. The art thing just came about through like having rapper friends who needed cover art, figured out how to make the cover art, figured out other people need cover art. So I started to sell it. And then When did the you start? Run. Like probably 2017, but I really got serious like during COVID, like or actually like the summer so of 2019. That's when I started like living off of it. Oh, wait, so y this is paying? Like, yeah. Fuck yes, that's well. I used man. to do like that's why I'm saying COVID's more serious because before that I had like events. I yeah. do events every like month, two months, and I would bring in like a decent chunk of money. Events? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Like just host events. I just go to. You a were venue. event host? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't like MC it, but yeah, I yeah. just go like put it together. You know what gotcha. I mean? Like, like event coordinator. Yeah, events are super easy to put together. People don't realize. Like you just go to the venue. You ask them how much the venue costs. You All know the event I mean? coordinators at home are like shut the fuck. I up. know. Even me, but like you gotta be organized. Like I always try and do events with people. I show them how easy it is. And I still end up doing everything because they're just disorganized. You know they're like, I mean? if yeah, yeah. To justify you being here, you gotta keep doing that yeah, shit. Exactly. You know, it's like, like. But events are a good chunk of money, to be honest. They're like, oh yeah, the easiest, easiest I MC stuff too. Yeah, like, MC is uh, perfect. So I get an idea of like, that is that's awesome. You should host events too. In that case, do like immigrant well, section. Well, MC host. No, that's... I mean like, organize the events. It's not a big step from MCing. Oh, I or I've organized a lot of events, oh, okay, comedy okay, events. Okay. See, Not, see, we just don't understand that. Like, is lingo. it organization? Is, are we event organizers, planners? Like, Coordinators. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it's all know. the same thing. Yeah, just write event management. Just what, you know? Management sounds fancy. <laughs> event management. See? I sound like I wear a suit and shit, you know? <laughs> On some level, I, I want to be like, hey, I can do A, B, and C for people that, like, all the things that I've learned, you know, the editing, the content creation, mm -hmm. all that stuff that I've learned. I'm like, oh, I can, you know, like leverage this, offer it to people and stuff like that. And, you know, it makes some money. But then I'm like, I'm so busy trying to do the shit that I'm trying to do. By the way, you could just put that away here. Okay, you don't um, want it to leave it in the forefront. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, this thing, fuck it, this camera trips me out with its focus issues. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like, I'm already so busy doing all the shit I wanted. The last thing I want to do is fucking, man, just be like working on somebody else's creative thing. I know, I know. I have the same thing. I do so much. Like I, I'm a, a an but artist. But that for you, that's well. your thing, though, is to be. You're like a creative gun. Yeah, yeah. like people come for, to me for the creative. Exactly, services. you're a creative like, mercenary. Yeah. So you are creative in, and every project is different, yeah. right? So in that sense, that works for you. But for me, it's like. If somebody comes to me and is like, edit my podcast, it's like I still have a fucking podcast yeah, to edit, yeah, yeah, exactly. like my own yeah. shit. I still have my own shit to do. And if like I don't want to be like ah oh, my god now I got to do this now it's work and but but yeah there's another saying I heard it said your first one thousand dollars will come from working hard your first ten thousand will come from working smart and your first million will come from getting people to work harder and smarter than you so you know you're just bro on you that got path. all the sayings I love this yeah, yeah, I just <laughs> you're a bank them of up. sayings yeah I just sponged them up but my point is is like now like while you're editing you're gonna get those skills and then there's gonna be a point where your your time is worth more than editing the podcast. Like you'll always have to host it, right? But there'll be a time where like it's easier and more feasible for you to like outsource the editing. And I think that's a point where you can start to like offer I'm over, the I'm, at, I'm at that point now. I just don't know how to go about finding. If you're if you if you're out there in Toronto 
and you produce podcasts or you have that capability, email the immigrant section at gmail.com if you have any sort of interest in possibly producing this. But what does that entail, like editing it? Well, I actually would love to have a producer. I'd f- I have to figure this out, but to sit in episodes so they can Google stuff, so I can have these screens bring stuff up, like okay, we, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Crypto punk. And they could be like, what's in the news? Mm-hmm. And they can help me book guests and all that stuff. Because I don't know if you, it, there's a lot of this that people don't realize. Like for every guest, I got to book, book two guests. Okay, That's yeah. something, I'm like on episode 120 or something like that, right? That's something you learn eventually. Yeah. For every guest you have, you got to book two. Because yeah. there's a 50% dropout rate, yeah, right? Yeah. Stuff like oh, that. Oh, people don't show up. Yeah. I thought the podcasts oh, no, 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 are no, 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 no. It's rare that people don't show up. Okay. Podcasts Without are just saying unusable. anything. Yeah, yeah. They'll usually be like, oh, they'll flop one way or another. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I always will book two for the one. But, like, people flop. And in rare circumstances, motherfuckers will just not even show up and never say anything. Yeah. In which case, you're just like blacklisted, you know? Yeah. Like, it'll never come back on. That's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm like that too, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm a like nice guy, but cross me once is... Yeah. yeah. Like, if shaky. you... if if Like, you see all this. Mm-hmm. I set all this up. Imagine you don't show up and don't say anything. So, for an hour, sometimes people are 30 minutes late. An hour late. Yeah. So, an hour in, you realize, oh, they're not showing up. So you wasted the setup, the hour, the time, like mad waste of time. So yeah, that's like a good. huge but fucking. I think you, just off the clout, you could probably get yourself a, a producer, you know? Like oh, I, that's why I'm literally, yeah. So if you're listening to this right now, the you immigrant section at gmail.com. The immigrant section. Or DM section. my Instagram or whatever. DM or email dummies if you know how to produce. This is an opportunity for you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like edit, like I do multicam, right? There's, there's two video feeds. But by editing, you mean like you take out part of the podcast? Or no, like I don't time? I don't take out anything. Is it I like just, someone sound? needs to sit there and go one, two, one, oh. two. Whoever talks. Oh, between the, the camera. two cameras. Okay, yes. yeah, I understand. Add the, you know, like subscribe button. Yeah. Add the outro, cut clips, Instagram. I feel like there's going to be people who want to do this. People do all this stuff. Like if every big podcast has like one or a team of people who mm-hmm. do this stuff. This and, and I've been doing it myself for over 100 episodes. So it's totally doable. And I have a system in place now. But it's like I would rather pay somebody to be doing yeah, it exactly. at this point. Because I'd, I'd rather work with the, be focused on the more creative, less I had a videographer. Shit. He used to do that stuff for me. Like, he'd set up the video and the cameras and everything. And then after that, he'd just be in the back, like, Googling stuff, like, kind of writing notes down and stuff. So maybe that's, like, an easier route. Get yourself a videography intern or something like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, there's, the podcasting is that space where there's people who are obsessed with podcasts. There's so many people that I've come by who don't necessarily produce or whatever, but they love podcasts, bro. People are obsessed because podcast is the most like rapport building medium platform out there. People think they know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been to comedy shows where the entire audience was a podcast fan. None of them were a fan of that guy's stand-up. Like I know you. Just coming in the house, I was like, ah, there's a bus. I know this guy, you know? (laughs) It was kind of that feeling when I walked in. I was like, ah, there he is, you know? Oh, dude, I didn't even realize. I was hoping you wouldn't be like way taller than me, you know? (laughs) And then it like fucks everything up. Unsure, you know? It's like, I I, I, I won't do the episode. (laughs) Yeah, you know? know, I went to do, I went to to Kensington Market to do that on the street style Mm -hmm. thing. And, uh, some people like were like they recognized me. A Sudani guy recognized yeah. me. It was so funny. I'm like, what's your name, Ahmed or some shit? He goes, yeah. I'm like, seriously, what is he? he goes? He goes, no, no, Ahmed, Ahmed. I'm like, ah. I just guessed. Yeah, it. you know, Ahmed Mahmoud. After that, pure guess yeah, with like, a do rag and black glasses. Okay. Guess sketch. I was gonna say I might know this guy, but there's a thousand Ahmeds. Down I'll show you the video Sudani. after. That's jokes. Hilarious yeah, footage. I feel like that's also like a point of marketing. Like it's easier to market kind of where you come from. Like, you know what I mean? Like in Sudan, you're going to be like the only English language podcaster if you're marketing to Sudan. You know what I mean? I'm not marketing to Sudan. But I mean like I'm not marketing. You try. That's, that's what another thing that like I would need a producer to do is like I feel like a more a better organized, better marketed. All that stuff would have led to, you know, things being better than they are. And, you know, knock on wood, things are good. That's but. a process. You know, no one would want to be on board without the work you've already done. You know what I exactly, mean? Exactly. Yeah, because so like they don't want to recreate the, the wheel. You don't want to build it exactly. from scratch. I've, like, done that at this and point. And they know you're comfortable on the mic. They know you're, like, a funny guy. You have topics to come up with. So they're only adding to that, you know? They're not really, like, creating anything, like you said. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The marketing thing's important, though. In this, like, digital space, I feel like 80% is marketing, you know? You could be, like, Blueface with, like, a horrible song and great marketing. And there's your, like, 100 mil. And then there's some guy in his basement who made the best rap song of all time, but no one's ever going to hear it. You know what I mean? It's so it's the true. Same with 
that's the thing that's fear that, that that like scares me a little bit that i'm like you know it, the internet is not necessarily a pure meritocracy right yeah, it's like not the best all. thing <laughs> doesn't yeah exactly it's like like youtube it's not the best content it may just be the fucking better thumbnail is going to yeah, do exactly. way more for you with the Click better description caption, or the better exactly. tags or whatever it is all that stuff and i educate myself on that stuff but it's like yeah it only takes you so far you know it only takes that's you so far that's the issue with like being like content jack based of, jack of all trades even like just like valuing the content sometimes holds you back you know what i mean there's a guy who's just going to make like a 15 second tiktok but he's not going to know how to market it and he's going to reach a million people you care so much about your product that you probably don't want to do the clickbait title you know what i mean you don't well, want to i've 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 attempted everything i've attempted everything <laughs> but you get my point right there's yeah. like a level of like care that stops you from doing some of the stuff that would actually help you because you want to be able to stand by it exactly and be yeah, like yeah exactly. <laughs> like the, in a court a content court they're like here we're here to fucking review this guy's video but that's the balance we all have to strike it's kind of like i want the integrity of my content but then sometimes some of the things you have to do for the marketing might like affect the integrity it might not even be like a goofy thing it might be like 30 minute podcasts market better but you know you don't want to do a 30 minute podcast right so i don't want to do a 30 minute exactly podcast. so like there's points like that where you just got to decide between the marketing and the content and that holds us back sometimes you know there's a guy who's just going to go on youtube and say how do i get a million podcast listeners and he's going to do exactly what it says with no like respect to like what he actually wants to do do you get my point yeah 100 percent, i get your point and it's like the reality is that like i'm here's the reality Okay, <laughs> that I'm a twenty. That. <laughs> yeah, 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 is that I'm a twenty nine year old at turning thirty. I can't wait to turn thirty in October because that just puts me into the adult game. You know, okay, like oh, this thing is thirty. Shit's pop. Complete opposite. Once I'm thirty, I feel like my life better be completely together. I wasted. No, no, no. I'm, I'm a, no, no, no. I mean, I really stepped into the path of my real passion at twenty five. So it's like it's we're like, still young in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah, feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. It sometimes. So, but it's like you want. I personally want all of this you know acclaim and success in this podcast but i'm like at the end of the day it's a specific niche you're a young kid just fucking if you enjoy doing it which i do just keep doing it mm -hmm. but sometimes i'm in a fucking hurry you know sometimes i feel like i'm in such a hurry and that shit's annoying but i had i had a piece of um mm -hmm. like affirmation that was actually really nice to see i i I just emceed the Taste of the Middle East Festival. Oh, I saw that. I know a girl performed there. But I saw your poster and everything. It What's the girl's official. name? Remin Kimi. Reem? I don't know her actual name. She's an Egyptian singer. She's kind of good looking. Okay, yeah. Remin Kimi. Mm, I, I forget. Mm -hmm. I don't think she, she... Maybe she went up with the Debkey yeah, group she, or some shit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I, 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 I emceed it and they had a TikTok celebrity there. And out of nowhere, the, the lady who runs it, she goes, Abbas, look, so we have a TikTok celebrity here. His name is... Uh, shout out to... Uh, Actually, I won't say names. Shout out to this guy. Uh, Is it Chab Sheik? No, no, not Chab Sheik. Because I know him. Uh, he's a random guy I've never met. He's like a youngish yeah. guy. He's kind of like the TikTok look. 18, he looks like a boy band kid. His <laughs> hair was covering one eye. Was, you know what I mean? It added up right away. I, I pictured it the second. But said. she started, she comes up to me last, you know, MC, they give you stuff last second all the time. She goes, look, uh, she took out a piece of paper. She goes... Abbas, listen, so-and-so is here. He's right there in front of me. She goes, okay, he has 3.2 million on TikTok, 275,000 followers on Instagram. I want you to announce him. I want you to do this. I'm like, okay, so you're going to come up? What are you going to do? He's like, oh, no, I'm not going to come up. I'm just going to, like, wait, right? <laughs> so I want. I, uh, <laughs> he had a guy with him, and I was like, so what's your name again? And, like, I messed up the name, and the guy with him, would, like, leaned in and corrected the name. I'm like, what are you, his name guy? Like, yeah. Who the fuck is his entourage? What is this? But... In her mind, the crowd was gonna go crazy. It's like all these random Arabs and like, like people in Scarborough TikTok. who don't yeah. give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And I announced it, and it was like this weird like, scattered I applause guess, yeah. from the left. And he was like this, and I'm like, you don't really. I'm like that. Reminds me that I'm going down the right path, you know? Yeah. Because I, I realized in that moment, if like, if you are no, if your presence is noteworthy, and you can't get on <laughs> stage, and like. And I'm not, I'm not talking about like Do you could have been Stephen Hawking. He could have well been like Stephen the, Hawking. Even yeah. Stephen Hawking could have come up and said some shit like, "We are in the world. We must be united <laughs> despite the universe." And everyone's like, "Oh wow, that was some Stephen Hawking shit, yeah. right?" If you got nothing to say relative to your craft or whatever it is, then it's like that's you're in a weird space because you got some shit to 
you've cornered yourself a little bit where it's like you got all these, but it's like an only an online like. Those are the people who blow up by accident. They don't have a plan. They end up like making a rap song. That or TikTok something, created you know I mean? that. TikTok created this whole thing where it's like you can become and and, and I guess uh, Vine as well, where it's like you can get very popular for very non tangible real life things. Whereas like <laughs> when you're like saying the person is here and they're just like waving, the people are like, because all I was saying is. He's one of the most biggest Arab influencers in the world. Thank you for being here. Like, I had to yeah, thank his presence. Like, it was like, everyone was like, like, come up and fucking do the thing you do on TikTok or something. It's if even you like can't, that what's the point? guy. That guy who just points. You seen that guy? Which Oh, the black guy, yeah, right? Just oh, we would have just bro, pointed. He's the biggest we, TikToker now in what, the world, bro. Is He's got the most followers? I'm pretty sure, yeah. If not, he had the most growth in the last year. But he's in like, the top Like, you can't three. beat shit like that. And he, he could go up and just be like, do this thing, and people would go But crazy. now he's got to figure out, how do I monetize? How do I turn this into something he'll long monetize. term? You know? He's so big that it's just like, he'll have brands. But it's kind of retroactive. I get like your point. You know what I mean? They, these type of people, I feel like they blow up by accident, and then they just find anything they can monetize off. Like, let yeah, me exactly. make shirts. Let me make a rap song. Exactly. I'm going to do a podcast. Like, whatever or this they brand think. really fucks with me. I'm going to go with this brand until they're until they yeah, feel like we're not a good fit to the wheels fall, exactly you know? yeah that's another good saying I, I said horse saying. and wheels so it wasn't either way it works. <laughs> yeah, it works bro i'm sudan yeah I don't <laughs> if it, it sounds well de- delivered it sounds like a real saying i'll be doing that with my family at home i'll be like translating sayings into arabic they make no sense in arabic but, like, but i'm just confident exactly yeah. they're like that's a great point let me go think about this you know <laughs> That was my whole thing before, I, even in university, before I got into uh, stand up or anything. Like, my thing, my, my uh, what I was known for in my friend group was just to be able to, like, convincingly say things that with confidence yeah, exactly. that, like, I have no basis for. I'll just say things confidently. <laughs> yeah, I had that in school. I'd always, like, tell people, like, like, I'd just be swearing in class, like, my whole school career, and the teachers would never notice. Then some guy comes and he's like, Oh, fuck. And the teacher's like leaning in to hear what he's saying and he gets kicked out of the class. You know what I mean? I just deliver the fuck confidently and the teacher thinks there's nothing wrong with yeah, it. You know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. You could just be it's like, oh, like, fuck that. He didn't flinch or anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He must not have done anything wrong. I don't really care what these kids say unless they're whispering. You know what I mean? That's like the vibe I get. What's it called? Um, so it was a big coincidence that you were Sudani to begin with. Do you go to Sudan a lot? Yeah, a lot. I, I went like the last couple, like three. Well, this year, COVID messed it up. Can I bring it a little closer to the mic? Sorry, button? this year, COVID kind of messed it up, but I go like every December generally. Oh, you go once a year? Yeah, well, I try to, you know. Dude, that's fucking sick, man. Well, like, do you have, uh, yeah, so obviously you got a bunch of family. So you were born here? Yeah. In Scarb? No, no, Toronto General, downtown. Oh, hell downtown, yeah. Downtown, baby. That's Actually, a real, you're, like you're down really the road human. from here. Yeah? I used to live at like 145 Marley, so yeah. like. 15 minutes walk, you know, Marley's... I hope you still don't live there. No, I don't. It's all Crips and shit. No, I'm good. But But um, you were born here, mm -hmm. and you were going back to Sudan from the get-go? Yeah, since I was, like, as as far as I can remember, I've been going back to Sudan. My parents are, like, very big on, like, don't forget you're Sudanese, you know what I mean? So you your your Arabi is, like, perfect? Uh, I can speak. I can't really write. But okay. yeah, I speak like I just walked off of like walked out of a gang in Sudan and stuff too. Like I just pick up words from around me, like people swearing, <laughs> slang words. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. I can't really speak like formally, but like if I walk around in Sudan, I'm good. You know what I mean? What's it like over there right now? I haven't been there. My, my mom was just there all summer. She came back a week ago. But well, uh, well, there's like I've been gone sides. in 10 years, bro. Well, it depends how much money you have. You know what I mean? We're like in Sudan, rich standards. Yeah, we're yeah, not so, for, okay. like, oh, like from Sudan standards. Mm hmm. We're like killing it. Like if mi- you upper think of middle, Canada. Class, yeah. middle class. But like in Sudan, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like compared to the general population of Sudan, mm-hmm. we're killing it. Yeah. But among like the those Elites. who are killing it in Sudan, we're nothing. Because once you get to the elite of any country, they're all on the same level of eliteness. Yeah, exactly. It, the country doesn't matter anymore. Borders I disappear. I could show you this wedding I went to like two years ago in Sudan, bro. It looked yeah. like Rebel Nightclub, bro. Yeah. They were playing like Sheikh West. Girls were like twerking and shit. I was like, this ain't Sudan. Like, But it's just they're so Khartoum? rich. No, nah, bro. It was in like some farm in Soba. Like, it was Actually, like a real farm. They had like white people cows. That's when I knew they were rich. You know, like White people cows? You know, like Sudani cows with the hump on the back yeah, and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had they like no black hump. and white cows getting milked by a milker. I was like, okay, this is some serious shit, bro. It's the first time I've seen white people cows. That's so funny. <laughs> Even they my boy was like, Friesian, Friesian. I was like, I don't know what the fuck Friesian means. It turns out like that's what white people cows are called. A Friesian cow? 
I I wouldn't be able to tell you, brother. Oh, watch out! Yeah, that's it's so. F- I had no. I know you're good. I had no idea, man. That's, yeah, that's such a weird sign to like know well. You're right. They got humps over there too. Yeah, they have like the hump cow with the horns, no spots. I seen like you know like bulls I mean? or something like that. I don't I don't know cow family there's shit. There's like a word. There's a name for it too, but I forget. You know, it's kind of like the India the cows you see in India. They're kind of like similar. I've never been to India. Me neither, but I see on Google TV. images. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you see alcohol in Sudan? Cause yeah, bro. I've that's so funny, man. I don't know if I should say it, you know. Yeah. My family's pretty open, but yeah. yeah. I'm saying I'm asking what you saw. No, you know no. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you how poor take like, I wasn't sober I, for five minutes in Sudan. You actually? Know? Yeah. Bro, okay, so when I went, it was uh, the last time I went, I was like uh eighteen. Okay. And I just stayed up. I went for Christmas break. I just mm-hmm. stayed. I didn't even fix my jet lag. I would just be up all night. Yeah, sleeping exactly. all day like because I didn't know I have friends I didn't have any cousins in Khartoum that no, I hang like out that. with it's like that till it's not like you'll just go one trip and yeah. all your cousins are older and they're like lit now and yeah. then everything's that's different now. Yeah, that's now exactly. that's the problem that's why I was like I gotta go but all my cousins are in the deep hell like the most cousins that I have a relationship mm-hmm. and with the Hindi like they're like two hours out of Khartoum oh, like near okay. Madani okay so in 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 Khartoum I have a couple of cousins who are like who are cool they speak English so it's like it's fun. they're not lit though yeah but like my other friends, when they go to Sudan, like, and they went in their mid-20s, they're like, bro, what are you, I'm like, because I remember it as being a kid. Like just in the hosh. Like, I remember it really as leave. 10, 15, and 20, pretty yeah. much, like 18. Yeah. In the hosh, yeah, exactly. You're in, like, the property, you're chilling, you go to the sug, you go to the market, yeah, like, you buy some shit. Grab a busy anos and come back. Exactly, like, that's it. exactly. Yeah. And, like, you know, it's like, um, there's a karama somewhere, yeah. and then there's a fucking hafla, like, which is, like, a, a family a hafla, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like musician a sings a little bit, and then we have paper plates and we eat, but... My buddy's like, bro, man, are you, I went to weddings, bro. Grey goose in Khartoum. I'm like, what? Yeah, exactly. I can't picture any but of that. But that's because people are our age are getting like married. So it's kind of like their wedding. But like the Ammu weddings are the same. Oh, of, co- of yeah. course. That goes without saying. But it's like, how did, how did he even get it through? Because in my mind, it's like the fucking police will even murk you. I have my own story with the police. Please too, talk yeah. to me. That, now one, that one can't really be disclosed. But yeah, I got disclosed a little sick. What are they going to? What do you got to warrant out? Mm. Oh, it's actually a problem? Oh, kind of, you know, like... Uh, Give me the, a little bit of it. Well, yeah, so, like, the police pulled up on us during the revolution. We are probably doing stuff we should you have You were there been. during that? Yeah, but, like, I wasn't partaking, really, you know? I was just, like, some Canadian kid. I was kid, just a like, nigga with the blunt. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Pretty much, you said yeah. it for me. You got a Canadian so passport, up, lanyard, yeah, like, exactly. untouchable. Bro, sometimes I go around with my Canadian passport just because, like, yo, just allow me. Step you know back, yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Step this back. Don't touch me card. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's, but, yo, it didn't work because it was the revolution. They made us get in the back. Like, first thing, they made us get in the back of, like, their pickup truck. You know, the police are pickup trucks. Of course, of And, course. like, I sat on the edge, you know, like, you sit in a pickup truck. Okay. Yeah. And they just, like, he hit me with, like, the butt of the gun. He's like, you think you're going on vacation or something? And he, like, pushed me into, like, the bed of the truck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they started calling me Erdogan. Erdogan? They're, yeah, they're saying I'm, like, a spy. They're like, why are you here during the revolution? I was like, bro, it's New Year's. They're like, Muslim people don't travel for New Year's. The police is telling me this. Yeah. They're like, Muslim people only travel for Eid and Ramadan. You're here for something else. I was like, bro, I'm here for New Year's. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they just started calling me Erdogan. He's like, check Erdogan means spy in Yeah, Arby? like Erdogan. No, Erdogan, oh, the, the Turkish president. guy, bro. Oh, gotcha, He's like, gotcha. you look Turkish. I'm going to call you Erdogan. And they just started calling me Erdogan, bro. Took half my shit and then just let me go. Like took what? Like your phone? I have an identical ring to this. Like yeah. I had a matching ring with my cousin. They took that. They tried to take this necklace, but I wouldn't let them. They yeah. took my like Apple headphones. I gave them like 10 Canadian bucks. I told them it's like way higher than yeah. the American exchange yeah, yeah, yeah. rate. Yeah. And they believed it just because they saw the queen, you know? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the queen. Britannia, yeah. Britannia. Exactly. And then, yeah, that's how Fucking it Fucking dumbasses. But yeah, the, it's... But they pulled me over my cousin for because my shorts were mm-hmm. too low, bro. Too low? Oh, yeah, like, like too high? Too high. Yeah. It's... They pulled us. My cousin had to be like, uh, the wahid with Canada will lie. Me. Like, he had to be like, he's you a have Canada to give him boy. Some, or no, 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 no. They just, like, right. fucked off at some point. Yeah. But they pulled up in the books, see, like, six of them in the back. Like, fucking yeah, ain't got bro, shit to do. Bro, it's scary, bro. They have AKs and do. stuff, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's not like here. Cops like, hey, how are you? There's some yeah. guy gets out. It's like, bro, I'm just crossing the street. What's wrong? But, like, the weddings and shit you saw there were just lit. Just My point to you is that. Your cousins are probably lit, but you can't show them that you're lit and they can't show you that they're lit. Because, you know, like, you're both like trying a, to be yeah. muhtaram. You just yeah, need yeah, that yeah. one, like, icebreaker, you know? Yeah, yeah, you got to yeah. catch him out somewhere, see him do something on Instagram. Bro, all I know is, like, bungo yeah. and, like, fucking... Bro, all Sudanese kids are age, Aragi. 
it's so like it's moonshine. Like, it's like, yeah, homemade alcohol. Yeah, it's pretty good, to be honest. And it just tastes like vodka or something? Yeah, there's levels, you know? There's like really bad. So what's your which... experience over there? Like you in Khartoum, can you get weed or is it hash? No, weed, bro. It's loud, too. It's allowed? It's loud, loud. Like it's oh, very it's, strong. Yeah? It's good, yeah. It's not hash? Well, you can get anything, but like I said, like I'm not like my family's a bit upper class, so yeah. like I just kind of live like I live here. I'm sure like most people oh. smoke bongo and like hash and stuff, you know. And so even your cousins are like that. Yeah, exactly. Can, can your cousins get out of the country? Uh, like money wise? Or N- no, no, no. Like actually get visas to other countries because oh, yeah. that's the tough part for but Sudanese. The, my cousin just tried to come here to go to Sheridan. They told him uh, Sheridan told him you can study that in Sudan. He came to study in international business. They're like, that's not something you have to travel to study. I'm like, bro, just let that's, him leave. He's like, I'm trying to, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm trying to live trying a better to leave, life. Bro. What do I got to study to come here? Like, that's, that's what he should have so, asked him. Bro, my cousin tried to come here and his dad's fucking rich. His dad's so rich. And he's like, they don't give visas to Sudanese because they're like, they're going to stay. They're yeah, not going exactly. back. But Australia this, won't give them visas. Yeah. Canada won't give them. That's how we ended up here. My dad tried to like get visas to like everywhere. every country. And, like, nah. and everywhere would only let him in as a refugee. And then in the 90s, Canada was the only one that let him like actually immigrate. So he's like, yeah, Canada it is, you know. I think fuck he wanted him. to go to England or something. Yeah, they all, fuck them. Fuck England. I'd rather be in Canada But does that thing too with the Sudanese like cross the border? You seen that? No, what, what do you well, mean? Like a lot of people go to the US with like visitor visas and then they just cross the border at like somewhere where there's no border. Into Canada, you mean? Yeah, and then they just call the RCMP like, yo, I'm a refugee now. Come pick me up. Really? You ever seen this? This is a, like a big thing. No, no. I've heard it come. I've heard it different ways. What, what would you hear of? <laughs> like not Sudan. Like my Afghan friend, they got fake passports, flew in, oh. lost them, and applied now for new passports. Here, yeah. No, no, they're good. Like they they were fake passports, fake Canadian passports, fake Canadian passports. Oh, so then when they get the re- the new, they one, lost them, I and know. they and they got they gave the them real passports. passports. In the end. Yeah, That's, yeah. That's the best loophole I've heard, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. But yeah, what Sudanese people do, they like fly like Michigan, somewhere where like the border is just like farmland. Yeah. And then they just land as... as, uh, as uh, How did they even visitors? get to Michigan is the question. But they get a visitor visa to go to the US and yeah. then there's like special but taxis. But they, they don't give Sudanese visitor visas. You got to get the lottery. That's yeah. the only way in. No, no, that, that's what I've seen. Like I've had family who's done it as well. Like I have a family in, like I'm related to in Montreal and one in Oakville and they both like came that way. They came to Michigan. They I don't know if it was Michigan, but it was like a one state. of these border states. Yeah, and yeah. then there's like a Sudanese like taxi guy in America whose yeah. like whole thing it is is like you give him like a rack and he'll drive you to the point where you can just cross by foot. This is the overground railway. Yeah, Sudanese exactly. Region. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Free overground railway. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are here to visit <laughs> no, no. but they just cross and they call the rcmp and now you're here like and they can't they can't you. send you back really so you just become a political asylum asylum yeah, yeah. that's fucking even when i was there oh, asylum yeah, yeah you're right because that's crazy because i would think that you got to tell me you have a fear for your life yeah but that's the you easy gotta, part yeah. like sudan's not exactly the best country yeah, in the world yeah, yeah. you just gotta get here after it's, that people will like understand you know what i mean but even there's another way people just pretend they're gay like that's like worst case just say you're gay and they persecute me for that where i'm from they're not oh, gonna ask you and for they'll a let sex you stay date. for that yeah but if you're oh su- you're right yeah, yeah, yeah they just they bring in a gay yeah, guy exactly like, like prove it's it. under footage <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, uh, how I bad do you want to be here it's like I, fucked up guards i'm gay but i'm religious i yeah. can't do it till marriage <laughs> it's like i'm in a relationship yeah, yeah exactly you gotta try it's something cheating like that. yeah but yeah that's like the worst case but i'm telling you if you're here from sudan like you don't really need a justification, bro. It's Sudan, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Like, Sudan, Iraq, Yemen. Exactly. You know the list, North right? Korea, Libya, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't need it. That's so. But they don't let you in anywhere. Those countries, for because yeah. they're on terrorists exactly. and because conditions suck. Like, oh, these people are staying for yeah, sure. Exactly. They're staying for people, sure. For sure. People are coming here just to like escape. You know, like I've I've had I've seen that a lot of like people bring like their um, maid. Like Ethiopian or Sudanese maid with them, and then she just disappears when they get here, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in other countries, it's like, I'm safer with you. But in Canada, it's like, I'm safer like, just I'm in safer society. just here, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There's a system in place and shit. It's fucked up because, like, you know how Saudi, you know what Saudi's doing? Like, all the Sudanese, like, a lot of Sudanese. Saudi is one of the places where Sudanese could make, like, a, a good wage. Like a yeah. real Jeddah. world. Jeddah is like Jeddah, Sudan. Riyadh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my dad, they were there six years before I was born. But like a lot of Sudanese for decades have gone there to like be engineers and doctors and all that shit. But now they just instituted a new like uh, tax that's like per the head of your 
a child. So it's like oh, yeah. if you have a family, it's a lot of so money. You can't bring so kids. a lot of them. No, no, no. For the people who are there already. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them have gone back to Sudan. Yeah. Like my brother-in-law, like my sister's husband, his brother was working in Saudi forever. Family. Yeah. And then they, that happened. They go, fuck this. They go back to Sudan. And last year, Sudan was so fucked up economically. So many people getting robbed and shit like that. They're like, fuck this. They sold their shit and moved to Cairo right away. Yeah, like, that's, my whole family's in Cairo right exa now. Everyone is in Cairo because it's like economically struggling. Apparently, there's like theft. Like people yeah, just That's what just I was trying like, to say earlier about thing. how much money do you have? Because like if you're making money in Sudan, like if you don't have any money coming from outside the country, you're you poor. Can, you Inflation is second highest in the world. I'm yeah, pretty yeah, sure yeah. we passed Zimbabwe, if not third, you know? It's us, Zimbabwe, and Venezuela. We're just fighting for the top inflation spy, yeah. you know? Well, inshallah, we'll get it soon. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully not. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm get back with you. But even like, let's say like last time I was there, which is like a year and a half ago, uh, one US dollar was 119 Janae Sudani. Mm -hmm. Now it's like 450. Jesus. And fuck. The, the In one year. Yeah. And even like that's, you know, like how they play with the money, right? Like that's actually a million. Like when I say one, it's actually a million pounds. But yeah, they keep taking zeros off the it. bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not really changing it, right? You're just taking zeros off the bill. Like at the end of the day, it's still a million pounds if you're talking like our economy inflated that much. You don't take back the inflation. They just print new bills with less zeros on it. Does that make sense to you? So I, like, I'm not like I could say yes because people are listening. But you know, you know, like <laughs> you how your mom calls like one pound a million. Yeah. And then million. probably your like older brother or someone in the other generation calls it a thousand. Alf, yeah. And then we call it one. Yeah. It's just because the all, it's really a million. Yeah, it's all the same thing. Yeah, it's just, just what you call it. They just take zeros off the bill so it, we don't end up with Zim like Zimbabwe. Like you have to come with a briefcase to buy bills. Like, yeah, we'll know? print more, but now it's a smaller amount. Yeah, so. denomination. Exactly. That's uh, that's what they're doing, huh? Because I remember when I was there like 10, 15 years ago, they're like, it's went from the million to elf. Yeah. The million exactly. to the and I'm like, okay. I remember the thousand to the one. Like, yeah. I remember the first I, time I, I went to Sudan. Yeah. I, I bought a bouncy ball. It was a thousand jene. You yeah. know, next yeah. time I came back, a Sprite was like two jene. So I was like, how does this work? As a but kid, like, I was yeah, like, yeah, it's better system, yeah. better. Nah, it's not at all. But yeah. So the thing is like the wages don't go up as much as inflation, right? So like if I'm telling you in one year, the inflation like tripled basically. They're not going to triple your wage. No, no, of course not. But so everyone's just poor now. The prices of every Yeah, my mom was just telling me. She's like, it's like. She's like, it's real hard to fucking do live anything right now. It's so expensive. Yeah, exactly. I feel bad sometimes when I go because like your family be trying to like treat you and stuff, you know, and I'm like, I know this costs a lot to you guys, you know? But yeah, that's rough. Yeah, you got to have money coming from outside the country. Yeah. Bro, I went with 200 US. I swear I didn't spend the whole thing in a month. In a month? Yeah, but obviously like my housing is taken care of. Yeah, but yeah, like. Yeah. Just it's going out, but I was like going out, like going crazy, like I go out every like night. Fool, you know? fool on me, boys. Yeah, yeah. exactly, bro. Fooling shy on me, bro. I didn't spend the whole two hundred US. Really? Like I went there, like this is what I'm gonna spend in Sudan. Obviously, I have like more savings, but like that's all I needed, and I didn't even spend it. So is it sketch? Like for you or me, would it be fine? Mm, yeah, as if, if you speak Arabic, you're good. To be honest, yeah. like yeah. Sudan's not like like I speak enough to for them for me to. Tell them what I want, where I want to go. Like I and I understand Even if you it can't, fully. You're good. Like I'm my no, cousin's no, no, no. half I don't, Latino. I wouldn't want to be there. I'm my cousin's half Arabic. Latino. Doesn't speak a lick of Arabic. He's good. He really? moves around. He's with he cousins. He's moving. Not even them. like he used to go to American school um, in Sudan. Yeah. So like whenever he lands, he just gets in a rickshaw and goes home. Like he doesn't even wait for anyone to pick him up and stuff. Like really. Yeah, Sudan Khartoum's a bubble. You can't like it's like Toronto in Canada. Like, you can talk about Toronto, but it's not Canada. Yeah, yeah, you know exactly. I mean? It's the same as Khartoum. Khartoum's safe. There's a lot of services. There's entertainment. But when you leave, you might end up in a war zone. You know yeah. what I mean? So but I mean, like, if you stay within close, like, Madani's where I was born. Mm -hmm. And, like, with Al-Hindi, all the villages around there. It's all, it's all safe. Yeah, it's villages safe, are, like, it's, the it's safest It's safe, it's place. secure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, the West, normal. the South, obviously. Yeah, I was, like, I was never in Sudan going to, like, you know, Bor Sudan and all yeah, these fucking exactly. places. But, like... Um, but to be honest with you, I gotta go. I gotta fucking it's like go. A, it's like a it's like a trick in my opinion. I think everyone agrees with this at this point. But like Khartoum's safe because if it wasn't, then the country would be like done. It's or nothing. even the, yeah, the, the, the like, be nothing. Even like there wouldn't be the the illusion of stuff isn't bad. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, if yeah. everyone educated and paid lives in the same place, and you present this illusion that nothing's wrong in the country, then there's no one and to the make change. The facade continues. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If there's like tanks in Khartoum, revolution tomorrow. You know what I mean? And that's what happened. When wow! What did you see when you were down there for the? Were you there when they just sprayed and killed like a hundred no, no, people? That was June sixth, the massacre. No, I wasn't. There. But like most of my cousins were there. My mom was there. Yeah. 
Yeah, some people seen some like crazy stuff. Like my cousin who like he's the one who like takes me around. He's like my closest like friend. Speaks Instagram. English well. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, grew it's up always me too. It's always like the one cousin who's just. I had one cousin who grew up watching so many movies. So his English oh, is great. That, that's a great that's way the to learn I English. Always yeah. hang out with. <laughs> they always there's so many Sudanese I've met who just know all their yeah, English from movies. I have that one movies. cousin too. He has like a hard drive of like 300 yeah, movies yeah. and he has he's them like, all memorized. Bro, lie, yeah. man, bro, 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 and I, and I, bro, and I can speak, man. Bro, what do you, you want to do? Gotta rate those yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, I'm like, yo, what up, chill. Yeah, that guy seen some like he told me some like messed up stuff. Like they call this thing like the Doshka, which I guess is like the anti vehicle gun. You yeah, know, like the big one. Yeah, and 50 he's saying they're like spraying that at bullets. the ground. Yeah. So that it would like bounce up and hit people. You know what I mean? Like he's saying like they sprayed at the ground and then, then it like bounces up and it like hits people. I don't know how to explain it to you, but well, like, why don't they just spray direct? Why I, they shoot I couldn't people? ask. Him. Saw, I don't goes. think he was asking questions. You yeah. know, he was probably running, but yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it takes the power out of it. Maybe it makes it more accurate since you're shooting Fuck. at smaller targets. But he like saw people get like cut down by that. You know, that's crazy. Yeah, and then he's telling me like, uh, it's just like it's like a panic when it happened that everyone's like, people are trying to go this way, people are trying to go that way, and then the next day they came to his university and they're trying to like pick up people who are like responsible so they closed the university and they're all trapped in so people were like trying to jump fences go under fences just to get out and not get caught like really? it was super hectic the stuff i heard yeah man fucking wild huh i know bro so that's what's just, umar bashir up to now by the way the president i think he's in jail the, he's well in jail? he is in jail but like i think they're talking about like does he go to the icc or not like that's like the big conversation icc here. is the international criminal court like oh, where's that? Like Geneva? Where's yeah, that? Yeah, I think yeah. it's in Geneva. Yeah, it's like take me to take me to but, prison in Switzerland. Please. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Give me the fuck but, out but of Sudan. It's split too because, like, in Sudan, he's in worse conditions than yeah. if you would go there. You know of what I mean? Of course. And Imagine then, the waiting area for the court hearing. Yeah, he probably, probably got like a PS3 <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you want Aquafina, Mr. Bashir? In Sudan, like he's probably like sitting in the corner of like yeah. some dirt cell. You yeah. know what I mean? We like some medieval dungeon. Darfur will not forget. But yeah, he definitely deserves whatever comes his way. It's crazy, man. It's fucking wild, bro. I'm um, I'm very thankful that my uh, parents immigrated here. Yeah, same. To be I honest. feel so fucking grateful and like lucky. I have survivor's guilt sometimes. Do you ever get that? Like, oh, of course. When I'm know, in the hillas, when yeah, I'm in the exactly. villages, I'd the be most. feeling good just for being dressed clean. Like, yeah. God damn, you yeah. know? Now I have a Sudan outfit. It's like a fake soccer jersey and a ship ship and some shorts and like I blend in. You oh know? yeah, me too. I just wear the jalabia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jalabia's yeah, a good yeah, look. Yeah. Yeah. And I and you you can't wear sandals that are too nice. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's like this thing is, you if know, you I'm all, yeah, I'm all, yeah, oh, I learned that in the hill in the villages. If you wear nice shoes and you go to the mosque, gone, you're not going to find yeah. them. You're going to find some tattered syphinjas, flip flops. I got the trick though. You know, like the AC units, they have those like, you put them in, over, put them behind it. You know, you just walk in with then your you slippers stink, and the hand. whole place smells like feet. <laughs> it's not my problem. Yeah, I'm getting yeah, my slippers yeah, at yeah, the yeah, end I of the prayer. My slippers yeah, are exactly. Ooh, that's nasty. <laughs> but I'd say you just got to carry them inside and like hide them behind something. Like that's the flex. Man. I, I, do you, mm-hmm. I wish more people would like how long do you think before like Sudan is like a legit tourist I don't think it's getting fixed as a political I science student will, because, I, I think everything eventually will get fixed because then the gap of standard of living of like the regular world we'll say the first world that I feel like that gap kind of stays the same and things go up the bottom gets higher the higher gets higher the nah. top gets you know what i mean yeah i get your point it like people become, have mobile phones now and exactly. they're they seeing didn't. what the standard of living is on youtube here. but that's why they're trying to get here that's though. why they're trying to get here and then if they can't get here then a whole new generation goes fuck it we can't leave we gotta fix this but thing we're right in here. like a weird group of countries of like somalia afghanistan these are countries that like hope is sparse you know what i mean like realistically, right now, Sudan's got it is way I'll like easier money, than Afghanistan. No, and but Somalia. I'll bet money on you, on it right now. We're gonna have another dictatorship in two years. I'll put money on that as a political science student because nothing's changed on the ground. Who's still like the last? Well, you can look at history first. Like we had independence 1956, right? Two years democracy, dictator. Okay, dictator went away. Two years democracy, another dictator. There's always two years. apiece. Two yeah, year piece. bro, we've not exceeded six and a half years of democracy since 1956. You know, even Omar Bashir came right after Nameri, right? 
You know the name Nimeri? No. Well, he was the dictator who held the country for 20 years, did a bunch of crazy was shit. Was he worse change. than Bashir? Nah, he was better than Bashir, <laughs> but everyone was still on the street protesting Nimeri. Gotcha. You know, like my parents so left. So is that how he ended up getting out? Well, he kind of went crazy. He's the one who like changed their flag to like the Arab colors and stuff. Like he went kind of senile and he, he went like super Islamic in the end. Like at first he was a bit more liberal. Yeah. And then... And towards the end of his reign, he started the whole Sharia law thing, like trying to Arabize. Oh, he brought Arabize. in Sharia law. Yeah. And then Bashir kept it. There was another democracy in the middle. Yeah, and two Bashir, years. Exactly, pretty much. I'm not sure of the number. It's either a year, year and a half, two years. So there's no Sharia law for these transitional periods. I don't even and then know they come back they and they go back full Sharia. The Islamists, exactly. So it's actually getting worse if you trace it. And then even now, if you look at like the strongest entities in Sudan, it's not Hamdouk. Hamdouk's my uncle, by the way. I thought it was a transitional council that's it is. supposed to. That's half military, half uh, civilian. P- but the civilians don't have any power. Right? Yeah, of course. Like who went to meet Israel on Sudan's behalf? Burhan, who, who, who's a, one of the military like parts of. I'm the, not follow. I don't follow pol- uh, Canadian politics, Sudanese politics, any politics. Sudan's a write-off. The yeah. short story of it, like I'm sorry to say this, I wish I didn't have to. Yeah. Like I actually started a charity during the revolution. I was one of the ones who was organizing those marches at downtown, like. Uh, Nathan Phillips and all Damn, that. Damn, my, my guy can't stop organizing events. <laughs> you I was on CTV stop in wanted. French and everything. Yeah. My French was horrible, yeah. but they're like, hey, black kid speaks French. This will be good for the news. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, I was like, I was really for the revolution, but like, if you look at just like the idea of like where stuff is going, it's not going like anywhere productive. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Even like, I can tell you this as like, my uncle was just the mi- minister of. Um, of energy, he just resigned. The minister of health was my uncle Akram. He just resigned. They're all your uncles. Like basically, it's like a close group. Hamdug like went to school. My dad for like twelve years in Sudan and in Manchester. Yeah. And then all of his friends, he just picked them to be ministers, pretty much. So. Gotcha. And so they all stepped down because they see like violence coming, done, or they but see there is violence coming. Someone yeah. tried to kill Hamdug already. They, there was a car bomb. Really. But um. There, nothing gets done. Like my uncle, they're like expecting him to make the electricity work. But how when there's no money coming into like we don't have any exports at all. That's Sudan's problem. Sudan has zero exports. That's why I thought we have a crazy amount of sugar and stuff like that. Mm, we have like bersim, which is like cam- camel food, and like sesame seeds, but nothing that will like. What's the main resource of Sudan? Probably gold and oil, but they go missing. The oil oh, is like. Oh, they're still captured by some families. that Yeah, are exactly. Like, like the biggest hill. Like they call it Jabal. Uh, Come a little closer. I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of it in Arabic, but yeah. it's like it's like the mountain where like the main gold mine is, and it's literally owned by Hameti, who's one of like the military guys who's probably gonna be like our next dictator. You know what I mean? Oh. And then there's like 60 tons of gold that goes missing annually from our exports. 60 know? tons? Yeah, like these uh, military guys. I don't know if they sell it on the side. You'd have to ask someone who knows more than I do. But like they sell it on the side. They keep it for themselves. No one really knows what happens. And then with the oil, we have a dispute with the South. So like the because the South has the oil and the North the has border. the capability of pretty much mining it. Exactly, right? The pipeline. Yeah. But the the oil's on the border, like our border. So they're like, South, who does it belong to? Exactly. There's we actually just made our first like open the border with uh, South Sudan two days ago, f- like for the first time since 2011 when they got like freedom of movement, export all. Really? Of that. Yeah, that just happened two days ago. What, like what was the main? What, like a treaty went like? Uh, has there been many treaty attempts for a while? Yeah, kind of. Usually they use like the South as a place to meet other people. The South has its own civil war, which is like its own issue, right? Yeah, but now they're self-governed, which is they're self-governed, but they have a separate civil war happening in South Sudan since the, since the splitting. Yes, it's really? like the Nuer and the Denka. It's kind of like a tribal war. Yeah. So like basically, Juba is a huge refugee camp. It's just like. I That's think they so they got like three times the population since um since separation. I don't know what you call w- it. Why is it that uh, like in your opinion, as you know, like someone who's obviously following this, and someone who's studied and has some interest in politics, why do you think that I don't want to say regime? But why do you think that country just can't sustain democracy? Is it because people external is, actors are part of it, and then like historical mismanagement is the other side? You know what I mean? Like, let's say today all the military disappears, and we can start a democracy. We need to start exporting something, so money's coming in the country, and that way our inflation just doesn't keep you know tripling and tripling, right? And on top of that, we have to fix the infrastructure. Like most roads aren't paved, yeah. schools are falling apart, electricity goes out every day, th- stuff like that. You know, and then. 
I guess then you have to create opportunities for people. They say there's like five pillars of democracy. So it's like tolerance for opposition, the uh, infrastructure, uh, education, stuff like that, you know? And then we need to build that base, which would probably take 10, 15 years. And then maybe we could get somewhere as a country. But as it stands, the military owns everything. You know what I mean? Any system that works. And this has been works, the case since since Bashir, 56, even since pretty much. before him. Yeah, exactly. Namir guy, what's his name? B- Nimeri. Nimeri, what, he came into military power as well. Uh, I don't know how he, he was. He had to. Have. It had to be a coup, right? Gotcha. You know, an Alexa dictator. And then yeah. before him, there was our boot, who only held for three years. They just get progressively worse. Like people protested our boot. Then when he fell, Nimeri came, and they're like, "Oh shit." Abud was way better. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then Bashir came. Then they protested Nimeri for 20 years. He left. They're like, oh, <laughs> fuck. Now Bashir is even worse, you know? <laughs> the whole issue is we have no exports. Like, I'm telling you, everything is just, like, I don't know how the money, like, is even working. They just print money. It's under the rug theft. Exactly. They just print money. And there's nothing to back up the money. There's no money in the banks. There's no U.S. dollars in the bank. Anything like that. They're just printing money. People use the money. So, of course, since everything's being imported, the cost of stuff has to go up. Because the currency is not backed It's just like a terrible cycle. Exactly. It's just like a horrible. And then on top of that, there's like Egypt. There's uh, Saudi Arabia. There's Qatar. They want Sudan to be like weak. You know what I mean? Because uh, they have like farms and different like uh, vested interests in Sudan. Like Really? Like uh, That I, they own the land? Yeah, they have like 99 year leases on like huge areas. I'm pretty sure Qatar between Ethiopia and Sudan owns more land than Qatar itself. Wait, wait, repeat that. Like between Ethiopia and Sudan, Qatar owns more land in those two countries than the size of Qatar itself. Which isn't much, though. Keep that in mind. Yeah, but yeah. it's like the idea of them being self-sufficient. So yeah. We come to Ethiopian Sudan. But are they doing something resourceful? Are they, is it are they doing something they lucrative back, out of their space? Yeah, yeah they that. just farm. They take the food back to Qatar, Saudi, UAE, and then they're self-sustainable, right? Oh, but then they, they just want got little remote projects exactly. in other countries, and they want the dem- dictator because only a dictator will give you a ninety-nine year lease, lease to yeah. another country. You know, are what these I mean? all leases that like are that got written in place with Bashir? Or yeah, the, they're all Bashir agreement. Bashir used to go to Qatar and they just give him a million, two million, billion dollars. They'd say it's for fixing Darfur, but he's the source of the issue in Darfur, right? So oh, man. Sudan's like, I'm telling you, when you said it's not Afghanistan or Somalia, we're in that class, brother. It's like us, Libya, Syria. These are the countries that are like in that range. Venezuela. Yeah, but I don't see Sudanese like gripping the outside of a plane to get the fuck but out of Khartoum. But that's because you know like People from Khartoum. That's what I'm trying to say. If you know people from anywhere else, they're trying to leave. We have two I active know people. wars. I know more people from outside of Khartoum. But like than Darfur, Khartoum. for example. Right? I don't know. I don't know anything in See, South those Sudan. Those people just walk. Darfur is the West. They yeah. just walk to Chad because it's better than like where we are. They're the ones getting killed by Bashir and all the Janjaweed and stuff, right? Then in the South, there's Jibal and Nuba. Uh, Bashir used to just fly over there with Blackhawks and shoot people. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, because those like the, the animalist religions and the tribal stuff that is it like comes from popularism. It's like the way Trump needs immigrants to like justify some of the shit he does. Yeah, they need the blacks or the non-Muslims. You know what I mean? To justify so, aggressions and exactly shit. all of or even like the way that they're treating the country. Like everything's going to shit because we have to like keep these blacks or these non-Muslims at bay. You know what I mean? It's so funny seeing. I've seen like the. The internal racism in Sudan against the... Even black is such a weird word to use because we're all pretty much black. black, But like shadism, it's like the really black, there's racist towards them, the South Sudan and stuff. It's like the colors so funny. Purple. Yeah, exactly. You're both black when you come here and they're like, I'm not that black. But that's the thing, it's by tribe too. So someone will be the color of the table, he'll be like, I'm Arab. Then someone who looks like me will be from a different tribe and they'll call me like African, you know? And it's It's like... So confusing. Yeah, it's just all con- like it's contrived. You, know? you pretty much have n- hit the nail on the head. But I asked some questions on the podcast where um, I, I'm going to hit you with these. But um, it'll be related to Sudan. But what's some shit? You know what I always say for this? I say, what's some shit you've only seen in Sudan? My answer to this is always like Sudan is the only place <laughs> where the the saloon or whatever. There's the, like the whole saloon will just be twin beds. Yeah, beds. Yeah, I'm no, no, <laughs> yeah, no couches, just yeah. beds. Everyone's on a bed. So vibes. I know you've seen. The, yeah, that's grandma I'm, just goes and takes yeah. a nap while you're talking to her type shit. You know, what everyone I mean? is horizontal chilling. But what's some shit you've only seen in Sudan? Especially it's like a going class frequency. of stuff. Is kind of like life hacks or just everyday life. Me and my friend, me and my cousin always like laugh about it. Like the shit they put on TikTok and call life hacks. Like that's just everyday. Like, you know what I mean? Putting a pan on the stove to iron your clothes. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. 
I'm trying to think of like more life hack type stuff, but it's just like ingenuity, I guess, is the most thing I've seen in Sudan. A story that like encapsulates it is like my my cousin went to get his cousin like service, uh, get his car service. And like the guy obviously has no manual. He's not like from Toyota or anything. He's just figuring shit out. So when my cousin comes to leave, he like gives him a few screws. He's like, these were extra screws. My cousin's like, how the fuck is there extra screws? Like, put them wherever the fuck they came out. You that's know so good. Like, everyone just figures stuff out on Do the fly. Extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the funniest part to me. That's so, and then if anything happens, he's like, I gave them to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's just like that ingenuity of like, everything's so broken that yeah. sometimes you just got to figure shit out for yourself. But it's that's wild. everyday life. You know what I mean? Dude, I remember when I went there, when I was 10, the first time I went to Sudan, where I was like, I have memory now. Mm-hmm. 10 years old, I go, I'm in the village. I'm with my cousin. And uh, he took a dump truck. He had like a broken toy dump truck. And he's just playing with it. And uh, he he had two syringes. Like oh he, everyone's a diabetic. So he had two syringes. And he found a plastic pipe and he connected them. And he installed the one syringe under the, the bed of the pickup thing, <laughs> the toy. And he would put things in it. And then he would push down on the one syringe and, and you it goes go, I'm like yeah. and I'm 10 I'm like damn these That's kids got like I blew my mind at 10 years old I'm like Jesus cuz for you the process to get that toy is go to Walmart yeah, for yeah, him exactly. the process to get that toy like, is Whoa. I have to figure out how to make this shit yeah, I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck these kids are like on some next shit over yeah, here so I have like a friend too his mom makes like homemade IVs she's like whenever she feels sick she puts like sugar and water she has one of the, like the the bags I don't know what they're called yeah. she just hangs it from like a, a clothing hanger and yeah. she just sit there with her IV you know <laughs> what I mean and I'm just looking like what the fuck you know yeah, that's, that's <laughs> crazy <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was lying too. This is like some cre- some of the craziest shit I ever seen. My friend's mom just sitting there with like an IV at home hanging from like a clothes hanger like, that she made. Only in Sudan, you know what I mean? That's why the life hack thing is so funny to me. We'd be like, see a life hacks like that's just life in Sudan. There's no hack. Rules of Sudan. Yeah. Well, and, and this is another one too that I don't really know if I don't really remember a specific one, but in Sudan, do do we talk shit? Are we shit talk? Do we have one rival? Oh yeah, that we dude, should talk. Who? Egypt, bro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. The, it was. That's Egypt. who said. That's what Sammy said too. Even me, Egypt's are my ops too. I just didn't want to say it when you said everyone's in, went to Cairo. I was just gonna be like, couldn't be me, bro. Can't go. I've been to Cairo. It's okay. It's good. Yeah. It's solid. I mean, it's fucking more functional. But see, I have this idea of what Egyptians are like in my head that makes me never want to go. You know what I mean? But don't you have Egyptian friends here? Yeah, bro. My dad's basically. I'm from like the north, north, north of Sudan. Half yeah. my family's Egyptian. You know oh, what I mean? Gotcha. Like I'm from Halfa. Which is literally like one of the last points on the map before the border with with Egypt. Like I'm Nubian. And you could tell, and, and the people at the bottom of Egypt will be like, no, we are Egyptians. Yeah. See, and the, uh, see they're kind of like like us, but it's more like Egyptians make fun of the Nubians even in Egypt, right? It's like the stereotype. Nubian of, means what? I thought that was like well, Eritrean, like Ethiopian, the black. Well, like... There's like the North American Nubian, which is anyone black. Anyone you know? black, yeah. But like the actual, there's like a set of tribes that it's speak like the Horn like, of Africa or something, isn't it? No, no, it's North Sudan, brother. Really? It's like the southern part of Egypt. Like, yeah. you know, Aswan, you've heard of Aswan? Uh huh. So, like, Aswan, south to Sudan. I, yeah. I don't know where it ends in so Sudan. So, Sudan, we're Nubian. Yeah, we're well, only that top part. There's like a, t- it's like a language group. It's called Nobin. So, N O B I I N. It's like yeah. three languages. Yeah. So, there's tribes that speak those languages, and they're between like, this place called Dongala in Sudan to like Aswan. The most Sudani name, yeah, exactly. Dongala, I love so it. So like we're Mahas, like the Nubian tribes are like Mahas, Sukkot, and Dongala. Mm, Dongala so you're ones. Nubian? Yeah, I guess uh, now that you put it in those terms, it sounds weird to say it, but yeah, we're like Nubian. Yeah. So you're saying the Egyptians talk shit about the Nubians that are in... in yeah, there's like the stereotype of like this guy called Osman, and he's just like a security guard. You know the people who like come to your house in Sudan who like Ghafir? You know the Ghafir? No. There's some people who, like, their job is to come sleep in your hosh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just 100%. make sure that yeah, it's, like, yeah, security. Yeah, yeah it's shit. just a, a human around. So, so that's, like, don't. that's, the, that's, that's like the stereotype in Egypt. Like, in any show, you'll see, like, the one black dude is the, the Ghafir, and his name is always Osman, and he's always, like, just unreasonably nice. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, here, like, yeah, bitch. Like, oh, yeah, oh, like, niggerish, yeah, like, back yeah, in the day, exactly, like, slavish. Exactly. Like, oh, there's nothing going exactly. wrong. He's just yeah, jolly yeah, and, yeah. like, happy and nice, you know? Like, uh, what's it called? Blackface, like, minstrel show exactly. shit. Exactly. It's the same, like, idea that we're just, like, jolly, nice, lazy. We're not, like, you know? We're not Go-getters, like, ambitious, Exactly. We're just, like, go with the flow, nice people, you know? It's like, well, no one can't. Well, shucks. Nobody walked in. And then, like, the big thing, too, is, like, 
we see them as dishonest. I'm not saying like Egyptians yeah. are like yeah. I have probably I have a more lot Egyptian of very close friends. Egyptian friends. Yeah, I have probably yeah. more Egyptian just, friends here than I do Sudani friends. Like this is just Sudan. We're rare. Yeah, exactly. Because they don't let us in. Yeah, exactly. But uh, but yeah, whatever you say, I'm not. Even like my that. dad's family. Just for any S Egyptians watching, my dad's family is from Isna. Which is in Egypt. Okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. like we're Sa'ida. Yeah. You've heard that word before, right? Bro, I'm not the guy. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so like Sa'ida, yeah, there's yeah. like three levels of blackness in Egypt. There's yeah. like normal Egypt. Yeah. Then there's like Sa'ida and it's literally like that on the map. Okay. It's like Egypt. Yeah. Like they call it Mosr. And then there's a Sa'id. This is the south of Egypt? Yeah. It's like yeah. the it's southern part of Egypt, but it's still north of where the Nubians are, right? Yeah. So they're a bit darker. And what do they call the Nubian area? Nubian. The In Arabic, they call it Nubian? Yeah, I, so, so what Saeed? What is it? Saeed is like a Saeed different class. They're like they're like Saeed is like between us, at, between the Nubians You're off black. and the normal. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. But they have like the stereotype of just being like overly manly. There's like the Saeeds. Yeah, Saeed. The Nubians what? are like Osmans. Yeah, exactly. And the Egyptians are, are, are like yeah. super manly. Like yeah. you know, what I mean, if you do anything, I'll come hit you with like a cane type shit. And the Egyptians are all Amr Diab. Yeah, exactly. They <laughs> yeah. see themselves as like classy. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But to us, they're just like, they'll say whatever to get what they want. You know, like a Sudani dude, we see ourselves as honest. We see them as like dishonest kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. But then it's like when you see a general people as honest and dishonest, then it's like... You can't generalize any yeah, people. I'm just then saying the like perception. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, I get the same feeling. Like, you uh, like Sammy you said, like, yeah, we talk shit about Egyptians. Uh, I had Egyptian comedians come on. They're like, we talk shit about Sudanese. Yeah, exactly. It's like American it's Canada. A, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's not, not like every American you meet is going to get a slap on the face or like you assume these things about them. It's just these like as the, a whole, this yeah. is how we see you guys. The cultural perceptions, yeah. You yeah. Know? And then maybe everyone you meet, you call them an exception. You know what I mean? Fuck, dude. But yeah, sounds deep. I'm probably not even the best representative for this shit. Like, Pretty I'm just, damn solid. I'm a very Sudanese Canadian. No, you, <laughs> you've been crazy. Bro, I was born in Sudan. Oh, All right. I read. And... I've been there not nearly as many times as you, but you are so familiar with the politics, the history and stuff. There's no comparison. I just like, I don't know. I you have an interest. I have a severe disinterest in politics. Like, I, I have don't an interest. I feel like as I grew up, I felt more Sudani than I did Canadian. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm slowly going that direction. Like, like when I was younger, like we're all the same. If someone asks you where you're from, they just mean your background because yeah. we're all Canadian at the end of the day. And then like since like 2015, I've been starting to feel like, I should just bang with Sudanese, you know? If I go to Sudan, it would be blessed. Like It feels good, that uh, that feeling of like no one looking at you twice. Yeah, exactly. You're just like hiding in plain sight. So much stuff here that's like, it is still unsaid, but it's in the air. Yeah. Like race. Latent. Ra it's latent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. race politics, yeah. the fact that oh, you're an yeah. immigrant, certain things that people assume about you because you're Muslim. There, everyone's the same. So yeah, it's just, it's are just you an, an asshole of, or are you a nice guy? You it's know an I mean? issue of hunger and economic yeah. <laughs> ability. And but even when you meet someone, it's just like, who are you as a person? There's not like that subtle like there in is the a air. thing here. There is a thing yeah, here. You know? It's like how does this person? What does their friend group look like? What is the demographics of this? You, you don't know feel what I mean? like tension sometimes of like oh, racial absolutely. tension. Absolutely. And then you'll see the person and their spouse is a different race, and you're like, oh, I guessed them wrong. And it's like all that stuff yeah, you don't exactly. get over there. Everyone's fucking Sudanese. Exactly. And there's a couple of UN and a couple of Chinese people here doing business. Yeah. You know, That's even Sudan. I have like a story that stands out in my mind when I was in like grade six. Some girl like, here in public school, Mississauga, some girl uh, stole my eraser. So like I, I pinched her or something. And the teacher came to me. She's like, I don't know if they respect women where you come from, but here we do. And I'm just like, as a kid, I was just like, what the fuck is she talking about? I'm from here. Like we it, respect women in Canada. But like as I grew older, it like stood out to me that like some people will things. always see you as different. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I just return it. Like, we're, I'm as Canadian as you. Tell me don't your you wish? Don't you wish that you were of this current mindset to for someone to say some shit like all those little moments of life that you're like, damn it, I, I, have, yeah, I would have a way better rebuttal now. That's what I'm saying. Now ah. I, I tell him like, yo, what's your tribe? Yeah. You know? Or you're indigenous, right? Because you're telling me I'm not Canadian. You're indigenous. What's your tribe? Yeah. And when they can't She's come like, up with one, I'm like, I'm as Canadian anyway, as you. Yeah. I just tell him I'm as Canadian as you, yeah. bro. We're both born here. Someone in our line came. I'm going to use that, by the way. I always do. I and sometimes that. if I ask them where they're from and if they're from the boonies, I'm like, I'm even more Canadian than you. I was born in downtown. You're from like Burlington, bro. Go Step back, back where you're from. Bitch. You know what I mean? Step the fuck back. Because I'm always having this convo in Toronto since you're I like, bitch, there, I'm, right? invite I'm you like, for I'm Thanksgiving. from two kilometers away. Yeah. I was born two kilometers away. You're born 200K. If anything you're not from here you know that's i love that dude i can't pull that off but you definitely could because like it's logically correct there. yeah oh, oh, i was yeah. born there but but still like we're all as canadian as your son no, will no, but pull that it indigenous off. Lie, like your that. son oh, will pull are it you off indigenous? yeah mm. are you indigenous i, I sorry, didn't know I you're indigenous what's your tribe yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But Rio, it, man, it, this has been logic. a blast, bro. Let's okay. yo, let's land this podcast, okay? How do we land it? I want you to look in this camera right here. Tell the people where to find you. Tell the people if they want to uh, get some logos or graphic design shit you done, how to hit you up. Yeah, my name's Basil. Go by Basics. You can go to uh, <laughs> at Back to Basics on Instagram. B A C K two B A six I X. I know it's pretty confusing. And yeah, hit me up if you need any logos done, events, anything like that. And even if you just want to reach out, you're part of the Sudanic community watching this. It'd be great to network. I appreciate our bus for having me. You know, the podcast goat you know, Always, in, in, in our culture. Always. <laughs> yeah. I, this, this episode has exposed just how little I know about Sudan. Oh, that's the wrong episode. Podcast goat, in. man. No, no, you I are. Am bro- no, no, no. He, he, his I'm destiny learning. in life is to bring podcasting to Sudan. He doesn't need to know about all this politics. And shit. I'll, do a, I'll do a podcast straight out of the hell with videos. That would too. be lit, by the I'll way. I'll do it right out with the Hindi, bro. If you go to Sudan, you should do one at like the pyramids oh, I'm going to bring. Shit. Well, that's a, I just don't feel like bringing these cameras. I'll, 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 take, yeah, I'll videotape it on my phone on my phone's camera yeah, exactly but I, i'll bring a microphone you yeah, don't lock like, your bags when you go of course but that little lock yeah, doesn't do exactly. shit my mom has all these little i'm like, this ain't gonna do shit man you gotta wrap it too so yeah, you know yeah. if anyone's been so in so the there. laziness will stop them but yo from my end as always uh bass's shit will be in the description so you don't have to look twice for that shit uh look out for the link for the new shirt design that my ooh, man ooh, did ooh, the globe ooh. that's all this guy if you fuck with that design Barbara and need White some action. art done this is your guy right here. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you want to support the show directly or check out some bonus episodes, please check out patreon.com slash the immigrant section. I also have full interviews of the on the street stuff that's out now. So go in, check that out, brother. Like, comment, subscribe. This has been a pleasure. Like, comment, subscribe, <laughs> as they say. Yeah, do that, please. <laughs> Appreciate right. y'all. But yo, until next time, y'all been the best. Peace. Yo, and that's the episode. Remember, if you liked it, smash that subscribe button so I can give you updates. And until next time, it's your boy, Boss Wahab. Easy. Bye.